He could turn over every single bit of his chemical weapons to the international community in the next week. Turn it over, all of it, uh, without delay, and allow a full and total accounting for that. Uh, but he isn't about to do it, and it, it can't be done, obviously. Uh, but with respect to the credibility issue, look, I just answered that. I just gave you real evidence. Evidence that as a former prosecutor in the United States, I could tell you I can take into a courtroom and get admitted. And I believe this man, I, I mean, I've, I've, I've personally tried people who've gone away for long prison sentences or for life for less evidence than we have of this. So I, I'm confident about the state of the evidence. You can go to you know, whitehouse.gov, read the unclassified report, and make your own judgments. What does he offer? Words that are contradicted by facts. And he doesn't have a very strong record with respect to this question of credibility. Because I personally visited him once at the instruction of the White House to confront him on his transfer of Scud missiles to Hezbollah, which we knew had taken place and all kinds of facts, and he sat there and simply denied it to my face, notwithstanding the evidence I presented and what we showed him. So this is a man who's just killed through his regime over a thousand of his own citizens. Over 100,000, or about 100,000, have been murdered over the course of the last months. He sends Scud missiles into schools. He sends airplanes to napalm children. Everybody has seen that. This is a man without credibility. And so I will happily stand anywhere in the world with the evidence that we have against his words and his deception and his acts. I would never claim personally, to quote, no better, uh, you know, there's a certain arrogance in that that I learned long ago in American elected life is not, doesn't serve you very well. Um, but I would say that uh, a lot of folks have a visceral reaction to public people presenting evidence post-Iraq uh, where they have serious doubts without sort of seeing all of the evidence, and not everybody has or does. And also, there's just an instant reaction by a lot of people to say, whoa, here we go again. This is going to be Iraq. This is going to be Afghanistan. And I understand that. I, I am very sympathetic to that feeling. If I weren't in, 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 in the administration, I didn't have access to what I have, I'm sure I'd have the exact same reaction. I'd probably be very questioning of public people. That's why I'm standing up here today. That's why I went to the European community. That's why I will be briefing Congress together with other members of the administration. That's why the president will talk to the American people, because our responsibility is to share what we know and to lead and to try to bring people to a point where they can agree with us, hopefully. Now, I believe that, uh, that uh, the aftermath of the Iraq experience and Afghanistan leave a lot of people saying, we don't want to uh, you know, see our young people coming back in a body bag and so forth. But that's not what we're talking about. And what we have to do is make clear to people that this is, we're not talking about war. We're not going to war. We will not have people at risk in that way. We will be able to hold Bashar Assad accountable without uh, engaging in troops on the ground or any other prolonged kind of effort in a very limited, very targeted, very short-term effort that degrades his capacity to deliver chemical weapons without assuming responsibility for Syria's civil war. That is exactly what we're talking about doing. Unbelievably small, limited kind of effort. Now, you know, that has been engaged in previously on many different occasions. You know, President Reagan had a several hours or whatever effort to send a message to Gaddafi uh, in the wake, I think, of uh, Pan Am 103 and other terrorist activities. 
Other times, people have engaged in making it clear that you've got to draw a line and that there are consequences for actions when people step over those lines. If you don't draw those lines and the civilized world is not prepared to enforce those lines, you are giving complete license to people to do whatever they want and to feel that they can do so with impunity. If you want to send Iran and Hezbollah and Assad a congratulatory message, you guys can do what you want, you'd say, don't do anything. We believe that's dangerous and we will face this down the road in some more significant way if we're not prepared to take some kind of a stand now. So that's our argument. It's not that I know better or someone knows better. It's an argument that we believe is based on fact, on evidence, uh, on, on history, and we ask people to take a close look at it and make their own judgments.